Black Lime. Hey, 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 MBG family. Time. Time for this foolishness today. There you go. Okay. Oh, I see the feeling. So we restart it. Let's see if I can get this in there. Hi. Oh, I see it came up for you. You must be live now. There it is. Hey, MBG family. If you can see us. Hey, 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 Nicole. Guys, I'm trying to share it on my own page. Hey, MBG family. We are giving people time to jump on before we get started. We miss you guys. We haven't been on for a while, and so we are excited about this word that God gave us on tonight because we haven't seen you all for some weeks. We have just been enjoying the summer, enjoying the kids, enjoying vacation with the family, working. So we have really been on a little chill mode. So we have just recouping, regrouping, you know, getting things back in order for us. And so we miss you guys. We can't wait to share the word. And I'm just going to do some computer stuff before we get started so hubby can talk. Yay. I just want to say thank you to each and every one for joining us, man. We are so excited to be back um, on MBG Monday. Um, thank you all for joining us, those who always come and join us. We are so grateful and thankful to have you guys yes. here on tonight. And for those who may just be joining for the first time, we want to say thank you for joining as well. Um, hopefully you get to enjoy tonight's show. You can engage with us. We want everyone to engage with us. Ask questions. If you have questions that you want to ask, you can ask questions. Um, comments are welcome. Any comments, um, any suggestions that you may have that you may want to give, we also open to those. So, you know, we're going to get the rope. We're going to get this thing started. Yes. And for, uh, for those that, um, what I was going to say. May not have known, we, we did a post a couple of months ago, probably in June, about our 30 days of prayer that we were going to do. And so if you did not drop your name on the 30 days of prayer, feel free to drop your name um, on that post or just on our wall um, or inbox us that you would like to be added to the prayer list. We actually started the 30 days of prayer on July 2nd. And no. so we're on, yeah. I thought that was the 30th. Which was that Friday? No, we started on second because remember we wanted to run through all the way okay. thirty days into the thirty first, and so we started and um, we're on day sixteen and we have been um, going really strong for marriages in prayer and so you guys are welcome to join in prayer with us. Um, but we pray every single day about marriages, about the conditions of marriages, relationships, independently growing, and part of what we're talking about tonight has been part of our prayer. Um, for marriages is, um, yes, you can still start, um, the prayer. As I said, for those jumping on, if you weren't on the prayer list, you could just even in comment in here, add me to the prayer list. We would surely add your name to the prayer list for 30 days of prayer. But we have been praying for marriages to grow, to prosper, to be transformed, to be touched, to be just to incorporate God. And, and just one thing, we're just praying for marriages to have a shift. Yeah. Because I think we need a shift yeah. in the atmosphere for marriages. Yeah. Because and a lot of marriages are going through a lot, and a lot of them are failing, and yeah. a lot of them just going through infidelity, but it's nothing that you can't get past. Yeah. You just got to be have a willing heart yeah. and a forgiving heart. And a forgiving heart, absolutely. And God is just amazing to come in and transform us all to make us and better. Maybe, and those who, those, we may have some people that's on here who may not be married, mm -hmm. who are looking to get married. Yeah. And these are some tips that you can use, or we're going to be giving away some information that you can use on what to 
look for. Yeah. If you don't have the book, that's the first chapter of the book. Mm -hmm. uh, finding a good thing. Mm -hmm. What does a good thing look like? Because yeah. a lot of times we say we want to be married. We want to be in a successful relationship, but we mm -hmm. don't even know what we want. Yeah. We don't know what we're looking for. We don't yep. know what we want. We don't know what to expect. We just want to exist into a relationship. Yeah. Not knowing anything. Yeah. You know, so if you're not with someone, you want to be in a successful marriage, start, if you're single, start writing down some of the things, your expectations, start setting your goals, yeah. start hey, saying some things that you may want, some yeah. things that you desire, um, physically, mm -hmm. physically, mm -hmm. like what do you expect? What do you want your mate to look like? Yeah. Um, attitude wise, yeah. what, you know, what do you want? What you expect from your, yeah. um, Friendship out of this person mm -hmm. and just learning how to be friends with the person first instead of just jumping right into a relationship. Yeah. Learn how to be friends with somebody. Yeah. You know, learn, you know, what the person credit score, mm -hmm. what the person family background. Mm -hmm. That's very important information because this person person may um, have some medical issues mm -hmm. that later on down the line that you may have to deal with. So if you decide now that, hey, I don't want to deal with somebody who may have um, migraines, headaches, their family has been diagnosed that when they turn 20 mm -hmm. or 25, they have migraine headaches for the rest of their life. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you want to deal with? Mm -hmm. You don't know because you didn't ask, you didn't do the research, mm -hmm. the proper research that you need to do before you even got into a relationship with a person because yeah. you just want to be in a relationship. You just want to be married. Yeah. So start getting that information up about what you want to know. Yeah. You know, what, what is it that you like most about your person, this person? Yeah. Because a lot of times, before we even go into a marriage, if you ask somebody to say, what do you like most about your spouse? They don't know. Mm -hmm. I mean, they make me happy. What do they do, what do, they do to make you happy? Mm -hmm. And you can't answer that question. Mm -hmm. So you need, these are the things that you need to know going into a marriage. Now, I don't mean to go off on a little tangent, but, but I did. want... Ronald miss you guys. As you can see, he's probably going to be doing a lot of the talking because he on one. And I can't even get a word in, but go ahead. No, but typically you always, for those who just joining us, for those who just joining gotta, us. This not tip and 90, tip, though. 90% of this the time, tip tip. my wife, she loves to go in on the scope. So, later time, I just fall back. And that is very important. I'm glad you brought that up mm. because marriage is never 50-50. No. Marriage is they never. Just bank hard? Guys, and also those who are on the scope, we have kids. And so, it appears what? that our one of our kids does not understand that we're doing MBG because we haven't did it for a while. So they're yes. banging on the door. So give us a second, maybe for. No. <laughs> so Ron is just going to yell across the scope to them guys. But no, so our kids, they typically are well behaved during MBG, but obviously they have a pressing question. But no, like Ron was saying, it's very important to get to know um, your spouse before you say I do, to get to know what marriage is about, to begin to cultivate marriage before you get married, to begin to explore what you like, what you love, what you want, what you don't want, to have those conversations, to build that relationship, to build that friendship. And that's kind of what we're going to be talking about on tonight. We're talking about marital growth and the lack thereof and the importance of having marital growth as um and having growth in your marriage together and um individually so i was just so, recapping kind of what you were saying that i was just tying it into kind of what we're talking about but just the importance that um relationships or marriage per se doesn't start once you say i do some of the characteristics that are in a marriage happen before you get married right. some of those things that you need to continue to grow and have in your marriage happen before the i do's and that's something that you got to continue to um put in place and continue to work on in your marriage and your yes because once you say i do that's when the work really starts yeah that's not saying that you know that's when the marriage starts to fail but that's when the work really starts when you Absolutely. say i do yeah and that's that's part of the growth process mm -hmm. of a marriage. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you went into no, I didn't what go we're yet. talking about. I said we were talking about growth, but I didn't Yeah, know but we're did. talking about mm -hmm. growth. Anything that um, have growth, you have to feed it. Mm -hmm. So whether it's a plant, whether it's an animal, whether it's your marriage, whether it's your relationship, mm -hmm. even if it's down to your spiritual life, mm -hmm. you have to feed your spirit the word for it to grow. Mm -hmm. You have to feed your flesh for it to grow. Mm -hmm. You have to feed your dog for it to grow. Yeah. You have to even feed your plants for it to grow. Yeah. Everything has to go through a growth process. Absolutely. And when it goes through that process, it has to be fed something. Yeah. Something has to be fed to it. Your phone does not work unless it's fed the, the power mm -hmm. that it needs to operate. Mm -hmm. Everything has to be fed something. Mm -hmm. So what are you feeding your marriage? Absolutely. I think the thing about it is that 
people typically do not associate growth with um, marriage. And so they really don't think about um, the areas of their marriage that needs to grow or that marriages grow over time. What we tend to do is confuse mm -hmm. time and age of marriage with growth and wisdom. And so a lot of times we think because we've been married 10 years, 15 years, 20 years that we have automatically grown and that's not the case. You have to be intentional about growth for growth to happen in your marriage. So that's very good that you mm -hmm. say that. It's not that you have grown, time have passed. Absolutely, absolutely. And that's so the difference because time difference. will pass whether you do anything or not. Like mm -hmm. you're going to add years to your marriage whether you be intentional about it or not. As long as you stay married, you will get to 10, 15 years. Now, yeah. your marriage may suck. 10 or 15 years and you may go through some very hard times and you may find it starting to fail in 10 or 15 years if you're not doing what needs to be done to grow. And I agree with that. And so I think that's where people get a lot of confusion because I'm in it and we've been here 20 years. We made 25. We have grown together. And no, 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 you haven't grown together. You, Growth is intentional. You have existed together. Absolutely. You haven't Absolutely. been married. I mean, you've been married by paper, but you, have, you haven't been living in the marriage. You have been yeah. existing in a marriage. Yeah. That's a big difference, man. Nobody wants to live a life just existing in a marriage. That is very stressful. That's why you have people who have uh, aneurysm or mm -hmm. a lot of stress mm -hmm. or high blood pressure for that same reason. Absolutely. And so how, now I guess the question, I'm a, I'm a, this is a question within the question. So now how do we start to live in a marriage? Mm -hmm. How do you begin to grow in a marriage? It's simple. Mm -hmm. It's simple. First of all, you got to have God in your marriage. Mm -hmm. The Bible talks about one Sowing the seed, mm -hmm. one watering the seed, mm -hmm. and God brings the growth, mm -hmm. the increase. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. One plant the seed, one waters the seed, mm -hmm. and there's only one person who can grow the seed. Yep. So in your marriage, mm -hmm. you can plant the seed, mm -hmm. your spouse can water the seed, mm -hmm. but if you don't have God in your marriage, mm -hmm. there's no way it's for increase. your marriage to grow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, Time going to pass, mm -hmm. and you can be married, mm -hmm. but the marriage never grows. It always mm -hmm. stays the same. It always stands stagnant. So now we wonder why we've been together 15 years, yeah. and we don't even know how to communicate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've been together 15 years, and we don't even know how to date each other. We yep. have been together 15 years, yep. uh, 20 plus years, and we don't even really know how to have sex. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking about screwing, but... Mm -hmm. How to have sex, mm -hmm. to bring that chemistry, to bring mm -hmm. that intimacy, that passion, yep. that mm -hmm. passion mm -hmm. within the room. Mm -hmm. Every day, your room should have Genesis 2 over it. You should not walk in your room with clothes mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. You should be willing to go in your room naked and unashamed. Genesis 2. <laughs> <laughs> I'm slow today. I just, I just very. I, I mean, just she got totally on, missed I just it. got on that you went real left. I mean, this thing just, I, I, it did. This, it was like boom, 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 and I was like, no. Behind. See, but this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> she need to be fed spiritually. <laughs> I said, when you enter your room, you when you enter your room, it should be like Genesis two. <laughs> for those of you, I'm not a Bible scholar, but for those of you who don't know what Genesis two talks about, <laughs> Genesis two talks about being yes, in Candace, the garden. Remind him. It's about being in the garden, <laughs> being naked and, and unashamed. unashamed. There you go. Uh, so when you walk in your room and you marry, you should have Genesis 2 going over the door. You should walk in there being naked and unashamed. Now, this is not only physical, physically, but this is spiritually as well. Yeah. So I have nothing to hide. When yeah. you walk in your room, you should have nothing to hide. Yeah. This is how my day went. This is how everything going. Here I am. Take me. All of me. All of me. <laughs> Literally all of me. We're all grown, so we don't have to, you know, we don't, we don't, we're not going to, you know, shoot over nobody's head because we want everybody to get this information. This is going to be good information tonight because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we're going to be talking about growing. Yeah. And we're not only going to be talking about growing um, in a marriage, but we're going to be talking about growing yourself spiritually. Yes. You, yourself. Yeah. Not just, in the, in the, not just corporately, but yeah. individually. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you grow yourself individually? Yeah. What are you feeding your spirit? Mm -hmm. How do you grow spiritually? Mm hmm Reading the Bible, mm -hmm. studying, mm -hmm. um, fasting, mm -hmm. and praying. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that's going to uh, 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 feed your spirit for your spiritual man to grow. Mm -hmm. So you can't have a fleshly giant and a midget spiritual man. Mm -hmm. That's why you can operate the wrong way. 
That's why you can make some of the wrong decisions that you are making mm -hmm. because now your flesh is like a giant and your spirit is like a midget. Mm -hmm. And so when a situation come about, you're going to handle it with the giant. Mm -hmm. But if you feed your spiritual man, guess what happened? You start to make spiritual decisions. Mm -hmm. That's what you, that's what we call walking in the spirit, uh, doing things in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And so vice versa with your spouse. When you feed, when you feed your relationship, let's let, let's see, take a step back. Not even talking about marriage right now, but when you speed feed your relationship, what yeah. are you feeding your relationship? Yeah, you should feed your relationship friendship. Mm -hmm. Friendship, because you mm -hmm. have to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. The more you communicate with somebody, the more you get to know that person. Mm -hmm. That's why God even talks about um, um, knowing His sheep. He said his sheep would know him by the sound of his voice. Mm -hmm. The reason why he know, because his sheep communicate with him. Yeah. So the more you communicate with anybody, the closer you get. Because the more information that person spills out, mm -hmm. the closer you get, the, the, the more intimate you become. Mm -hmm. The more you commune. Mm -hmm. Commune means to become intimate, to become yeah. one. Yeah. So that's why we take communion. That's where the communion came, came from. Mm-hmm. So that's part of Jesus' body and his blood. Mm -hmm. So you commune, you come together, you mm -hmm. get intimate, and you become one. Hold on, yes. just one minute. <laughs> These kids are, I don't know what they're doing tonight, guys. And so um, while Ronald goes and handles the kids real quick, one thing I wanted to recap before we dive into all of what marital growth incorporates, I wanted to talk about um, failure to thrive. And so part of our topic is, is your marriage failing to thrive? So in the medical field, and in social work, which I'm in, we have a term called failure to thrive for children. And um, typically you will hear this term when children don't reach their expected growth. So wherever they're supposed to be um, at their age, developmentally or uh, health-wise, you will hear if they don't meet this um, and they're under the third percentile, you will hear this term failure to thrive. And thriving, as we know, is to grow well, grow vigorously, to flourish. That's what thrive means. And so typically in marriages, you can have marriages that are existing, but you're existing but not thriving. And so the whole idea of failure to thrive is in correlation to this medical term that we researched a little bit. And the medical term that we researched a little bit talked about some risk factors to um, being a child that's not thriving or that's failing to thrive. And some of those risk factors were um, poor eating habits and poor nutrition and neglect. And so those are the three things that stood out to me. And it kind of ties into what Ronald was just talking about mm -hmm. and how it ties to marriages. Because your marriage will fail to thrive if you have poor nutrition and if you neglect it poor nutrition and if you neglect it and we're not talking about food when we're talking about what you feed your marriage we're talking about the spiritual aspect we're talking about the things that you feed your marriage that help help it grow the things that you feed your spouse the things that you feed yourself we're talking about that piece and when we talk about neglect we talk about those marriages where you don't spend any time together where you don't invest anything into your marriage you don't put anything into your marriage to move it forward to make it grow and so I thought it was very amazing that um, failure to thrive in a child can correlate so easily to failure to thrive in your marriage that it's so closely connected that it is all about what you give it it's all about what you pour into it that actually feeds it and makes it grow and it also said that you can avoid failure to thrive in children simply by having regular checkups with the pediatrician so yeah. regular checkup with your doctor and we all know that if you have regular checkups with Christ you can also avoid failing to thrive in your marriage if you take your marriage to God for checkups if you take your spouse if you and your spouse go to God for regular checkups about your marriage mm -hmm. you can avoid failing to thrive before it ever happens and so I thought that was so awesome that's kind of why we titled it with it um with it on tonight to give that example of how that happens in a marriage mm. So you was on a tangent before the boys had a big bang I, know, I don't I don't really know back. I'm <laughs> trying, trying to come, come back. back I'm trying to come back <laughs> No, so we were talking about feeding your spirit. Oh, yeah, feeding your spirit. Now, yeah, right. I think a post we did earlier, it was today or yesterday, we were talking about um, time together plus time with God. Yes. Time together plus time together with God equals marital growth. And so I guess we can tackle time together first. Because yeah. a lot of people spend time together, but the time isn't quality time and so you can have the quantity and i think we talked about this before yeah because i think the difference 
you you can have time. And mm-hmm. It's a difference between time and quality time. Absolutely. Because we can spend time, we could be in the same house and spend that's spending time together because mm-hmm. we're in the same vicinity. We're in the same building. We can be even in the same room. Yes. But quality time means we are engaging. We are talking to yes. one another. We you know. We're interacting. We're interacting mm-hmm. with each other. Mm-hmm. Or in even, a purposeful way. Or even getting physical. Yeah. It's spending time. Yeah. Or even sexual. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you always got to take it, but yeah. Yeah. I mean. I mean, that's what you should do. <laughs> that breaks the ice to a lot of things. No, because that's very true. Because then you yeah. have a lot of marriages that aren't intimate at all. And that's so you problem. cannot come that together. You cannot connect if you're not connecting physically, too. That's very real. That's very true. That that's all incorp- that all encompasses marriage and that coming together piece but i think it's so important because a lot of times in marriages we think that we're spending quality time together and we're really not doing um and spending the quality time needed to make our marriages grow yeah so we're like what are you talking about when you're spending quality time together you're asking me i'm just saying in general because that determines the level of growth that you will have yeah because i think when you engage with your spouse, mm-hmm. or even a walk to the park, or mm-hmm. even a walk to get some ice cream, mm-hmm. that is quality time. Yeah. Um, you know, you in one room and your spouse is downstairs, that is, that's not quality time. Uh-huh. That's just time in the house. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So I think we had to get to a point where we began to spend that quality time that's needed. Mm-hmm. Um, one of the things... One of the things that I am now um, start to doing some research on is uh, where a lot of marriages fail is um, we don't understand our spouse. Absolutely. We don't know what our spouse desires. Mm-hmm. We don't know the favorite color of our spouse. Mm-hmm. We don't know what triggers our spouse. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't know what brings our spouse joy. Yeah. We don't know what brings them happiness. We can't even read their moods. We can't even read their moods. So when something is wrong... Um, with your spouse, you should automatically know how to pick that up. Absolutely. When something is not right, the body language, you should know mm-hmm. how to pick up on the body. That is understanding mm-hmm. your spouse. Yep. You should know when it's that time of the month mm-hmm. for your spouse. Mm-hmm. You should know when that time should be up yep. for your spouse. These are the things your wife should know when um, you have had a bad day Absolutely. or you have had a long day. Mm-hmm. It is something distinctive about your face mm-hmm. should show that, hey, no, something ain't right. Because normally when he come in the house, he kiss me or he go... You know, run up the stairs. It's something yeah. should trigger her to say, no, something is not right. But see, the thing about it is when you truly grow in marriage together, it, it, it even goes beyond the facial expressions. You can almost feel like their spirit. Like a spiritual spirit. connection. Like, yeah. yeah. So when your spirit comes in the house and it's heavy, it automatically makes me shift. But then let's go back. That's why it's so important when the Bible talks about the two becoming one. Absolutely. So if you're walking and your left arm start to hurt mm-hmm. You know that mm-hmm. because that's a part of your body. Mm-hmm. Your you body is one. Mm-hmm. You feel it. Mm-hmm. So just like when your spouse is in pain, yeah. you should know that. Yeah. yeah. You know, you should pick up on that something is wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And because a lot of times, typically when something is wrong with someone, they will give off certain vibes, certain signals energy. anyway. Yeah. yeah, certain energy comes off anyway. But when you're growing effectively in marriage, you truly can feel the spirit of your spouse. And so you can you can feel when they're in a great mood, they're in a good mm-hmm. mood, they come in. It's just a certain, certain something there. And you can also feel when they're stressed, when yeah. they're worried, like all of those things. I'm not saying that you shouldn't communicate this to your spouse, but, you're at, but as a wife, for a husband, you should also be looking to pick up on certain things. You should be looking to see certain things about your spouse. And, and that's good that you say that, that when your spouse is stressed, you should know how to pick that up. Mm-hmm. Now, ladies, if your husband is stressed, we all know what you can do to de-stress him. Now, let's flip Jesus. it to the... Uh, no. Ladies, please, <laughs> if your husband has had a long day or a stressful day, it's one simple way is a start that you could distress him. I don't care how many bills he got. I don't know what happened at work. I don't care what's going on in his spiritual life. Give your husband. Feed him a little Nicky. Feed him what he <laughs> desires, and you will see Give that that could distress him. <laughs> now, let's flip it around to the men. Men, mm-hmm. you got to understand that you're dealing with one of the most emotional creatures that yes, God has created. So now you have to tap into your own uh, emotional side Absolutely. to be able to deal with this emotional creature. Absolutely. You can't deal with an emotional creature physically. Mm-hmm. Say that again. Amen. Now I'm in your corner on that. We on the Come same on, page. Get behind Give me. it to me. I will. <laughs> I truly will. Not like that. Say what you 
just say it again. Oh, oh, oh okay. Uh-huh. This girl, she be throwing me off the time. Oh, my Don't... God. You know, it like it got dirty for a minute. She's like, give it to me. I'm like, hold on now. Wait, wait. Uh, Focus, love. But, um, I don't forgot what I was saying. You um, said you cannot feed an emotional creature and deal and with an emotional creature physically when no, it's an emotional can't. problem. Yeah. So, men, what you have to do is you have to tap into your emotional. Absolutely. Uh, physical, spiritual bank yeah. to be able to now withdraw from your emotional side to deposit into her. Yeah. And so a lot of times what we mess up is we go at the women physically. Yes. So what's wrong with you? I mean, man, she acting crazy. No, she's not acting crazy. Mm-hmm. Take the time out to hear her. Mm-hmm. And yeah. not with your ears, but with your heart. Come on now. Ooh. Not with your ears. With your... You know what? I, I need an offering plate for you, bro. You no, you don't need no offering plate. No. You don't need no offering plate. You do Focus. not need Look, let me stop. I know you're you going to say nothing else to take you off target. On, I'm girl, not going to say nothing else to take you off target. Okay. No, but but honestly, that's but, good. That really is good. Yeah. Because, and, and you know what? It's amazing. You know, we talk about these things, but just to see your growth and how we talk and it all come out, it's awesome. I'm so proud. Yeah, I'm so I'm proud going of in. you. Yeah. <laughs> see, she's trying to take me there, man. I'm really not trying to go there tonight. I'm trying to get I'm trying to get y'all some real spiritual food, man. And she's trying to, you know, she's trying to take me left here. No, baby, but, but that's, that's really good. As men, that's what we have to learn how to do. And yes. I think this is a place where a lot of men begin to struggle. Mm-hmm. When their wife is having the emotional breakdown, mm-hmm. then what do we do? Mm-hmm. We have to revise them mm-hmm. with our emotional peace that is filled and, you know, injected into them. Yes, absolutely. And not and not attack it yeah. with, you know, some crazy nonsense remark like man she crazy what's wrong with you man mm-hmm. you always doing this no. and you go with that stuff again <laughs> that's a good one <laughs> and so we have to learn how to break you it down crazy again, you know yeah. tap into your 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 emotional mm-hmm. bank to mm-hmm. be able to release that yeah because that's but, what they need yeah absolutely and one thing about it is i think the beauty of marriage is that god gives us each um what we need to pour into our spouse when we need it, if mm-hmm. we tap into it. Because what I think, um, oh, my battery going, am I, is my phone not charging? Oh, no, it's not. not. So um, one thing about it, guys, I'm going to connect my phone, but one thing about it, God does give us um, what our spouses need um, to, gives us yeah, this, what look, we need to give I our spouse. I didn't mean to cut you off. That's plain and simple. Yeah. Why do you think uh, one, the male have one body part and the woman have another one? Yeah. He already knew. Hey, you got this piece of the puzzle? Yeah. This need to fit inside this piece of the yeah. puzzle. Yeah. That's just that simple. That's yeah. how he made it. Yeah. But I want I want to talk about that. Oh, okay, go ahead. I was talking about like when somebody needs something, he took it real. I don't even know what to say no more. But um, yeah, so I was <laughs> talking about <laughs> No, but honestly, what? when 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 what I notice is that if I'm in any mood that's altered and I'm not lined up and I'm not centered, that you easily know how to bring me back to a place. Like, you know how to feed me. And so, mm-hmm. you know how to give me what I need, whether I'm down, whether I'm stressed, whether I'm lacking in faith, whether I just need some support, whether I need some encouragement. You always have that to give me when I now, need Now, let's go back to the basics. Okay. It's just like when, um, see, be, being a husband, you have to learn this. If, if any husband out there who have kids, mm-hmm. one thing, if you take the time and take a baby when they're newborn, you know, you, you got to treat them real fast, mm-hmm. fragile. Mm-hmm. You know, you just can't put a T-bone steak inside the baby mouth. Mm-hmm. No. You have to take, you know, a teaspoon. Mm-hmm. Then you take the milk. Mm-hmm. And then you start to feed them. Mm-hmm. Or if it's breast milk, you know, you mm-hmm. start feeding the baby with the bottle. You mm-hmm. you handle that baby with care. Mm-hmm. Likewise, with mm-hmm. your wife, you would learn how to feed her yeah. and see the desires of her yeah. the more that you become intimate with mm-hmm. her. Now, intimacy doesn't mean sexual peace. Exactly. Yeah. It means having that emotional connect with her. Yes. So that's how you know what she need to be fed at that particular mm-hmm. time. Yeah. Because maybe she don't need uh, to be fed meat at yeah. that particular time. Yeah. And it requires time. It re- and I- and it, it does. It requires time yeah. over a period of time. Yeah. You know, even becoming a parent. Yes. It requires time because yeah. you learn new things each and every day. Mm-hmm. And you go through different stages when the baby just cry, cry, cry for no reason. Mm-hmm. You have to learn what to do now. Yeah. And so think about it. You just made a great point because we do have four boys and we went through all these baby stages. And so one thing that I always noticed with my boys was that if um, if they began to uh, cry, 
I could almost read the cries. So I knew if it was a cry that I just kind of want some attention from mom. I want to be held. I don't want to be put down. Or if it was a I'm hungry cry. Mm -hmm. Or if it was a I need to be changed cry. Or if it was a I'm hurting kind of cry. Like I may be ill. I may have a fever. We began to be able to read what was going on with our kids. That came from what Ronald just said, that intimate time, that mm -hmm. time spending with them, that time paying attention to their needs, what they, um, what they, um, needed and, you know, just knowing them. And so in marriage, we don't take the time to know our spouse. Yeah, that's true. Like that's true. we say we know each other and we're existing together. We all come to the same house every day, but we don't really connect to the level that God intends us to connect, to be one, to truly know our spouse. And that's why marriages aren't growing because we're not taking the time to know each other. Yeah, that's true. Like we're having these superficial uh, one thing, one thing I want to talk about. So in marriage and for your marriage to grow, you gotta have marital goals, guys. You gotta have a goal for your marriage and you should have goals with an S for your marriage and you should have those every year. So we have a lot of couples that we coach and that never have established goals for their marriage. And so every year you should have check-ins to where you reflect on <coughs> the goals that you set for your marriage and where you are, if they were met or not. And not this superficial hashtag relationship goal stuff they got going on. We talking about some true growth. If the goal in our marriage is to, Hey, okay, I see we're both kind of um, impatient with each other. We both need to build a little patience so let's let, let's make that our marital goal let's make that one of our goals to build more patience with each other within this year if our goal is a financial goal we talk about that hey we want to get to this point within the next year if our goal is to just spend more time together or anything like that whatever your goal is you have to talk about it with your spouse and you have to work towards it mm -hmm. you have to be willing to hold each other accountable in the process of getting to reaching that goal and so if patience was our goal for the year and we get into situations where he's very impatient then i simply remind him okay you know what babe this is i see this is god building this area in our life like because you kind of seem <coughs> agitated and impatient and remember patience is what we're both trying to cultivate together in our marriage and so maybe we should just take a breather and come back to this conversation in a minute i mean it's so many ways and when you do that that sparks growth in your marriage because what mm -hmm. that does is that holds you accountable individually it holds the marriage accountable collectively and when you put god into it it holds both of you accountable because god will convict your spirit Anytime that you're saying you want to work on something and you're talking to God about what you want to cultivate, God puts you in situations to use that very yeah. thing that you say you're trying to build. Just like mm -hmm. building muscles. We always talk about it. You don't build muscles by not working the muscles. And so you got to be able to work these goals that you set forth. And when you work them, they begin to grow and you begin to see them, pro you, you begin to see them grow in your marriage. I agree. That's all you got. You had so much to say. Yeah, but when I look at your face... <sighs> So you got to so have marital goals. Uh -huh. and, and I was just asking the question. I asked, you know, what are some of you guys' goals? And I seen somebody said communication. And mm -hmm. I think communication is time together. That's a I big see. key yeah. on um, having a successful um, marriage. Mm -hmm. Because everything stems from communication. Mm -hmm. If you uh, have infidelity issues, if you have trust issues, mm -hmm. if you have... Um, any kind of issue, mm -hmm. uh, uh, financial issues, yeah. spiritual issues, whatever the issue may be, it all stems from communication because everything has to be communicated. Absolutely. And if you're not um, effectively communicating to your spouse, they're where all the issue lies. Yeah. <clears throat> and see, the thing about it is this whole thing about growth and spending time together. So we said time together is the first piece. You can't have effect. You can't spend time together and make it count if you don't know how to communicate effectively. So mm -hmm. if we're just hanging out, just to be hanging out, and we're not talking about anything that's nourishing our spirits, that's nourishing our marriage, like we're not growing. And so absolutely, you got to be able to have effective communication. And I think that should be a long-term goal. Like I think some people put it in place for short-term periods. So like, okay, we need to work on communication. Communication is always something we always need to work mm -hmm. on. Nobody, nobody is a master at communication. What we do is we learn how to communicate more and more and more. The more we do it, we learn how to communicate more effectively. Yeah. 
you are doing it right. And so that's a long term goal for anybody. You got to keep pushing. You got to keep working on that. You got to keep trying because communicating never mm -hmm. stops. That's something that will always be present in our marriages and something that we always have to cultivate. And so I think you should. That's a great goal if anybody has it. But that should be a guaranteed long term goal incorporated every year. Got to be talking about it. Um, somebody said work versus home. What you mean, Yolanda, work versus home? Is that the balance of the two? Because that's important, too. That is very, 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 very important. So let's talk about that because that comes back into how do you grow in marriage when there's a demand for work and there's a demand for home time. How do you balance the two? And let me tell y'all, this is great to be talking about this. Hold on. Before we even go on there, <laughs> let's get to these people's question about <laughs> work and home. That's what I'm I, I know, said it's but, great that we're talking about this. But the way the look you just gave me. No, because, you know, people, a lot of times, um, how do you guys spend time together? Great, we're going to tell you because we're going to jump right into yeah. that. That kind of breeds into this. Yeah. Because a lot of times people assume because we're MBG and we're on social media and they see the pro pictures, we're hanging out, we're spending time together, that it's always all good. That's not the case. Our lives are quite busy. So we both work. Um, We both have careers. We both are raising children. We have four boys, so we have four to boys. balance time. We both have individual businesses that we run. Um, Ronald's is a lot more demanding than my business as his requires him to leave, and I can do my business at home. And so, his schedule has been in insane the last few months when i say insane i mean insane like he literally is working like 18 hour days and so that only leaves six for him to sleep and come home and do whatever you know quickly so a lot of times we have to be strategic about the time that we spend together and i tell mm -hmm. people this all the time you got to be first we had to have a conversation because i will admit that when I don't get my time, I have little tantrums, and Ronald has Not picked middle. up. Not Ronald middle. has picked up on my tantrums, and he's like, "Okay, clearly, babe, we need a date night because I see you getting a little agitated." And so, we have sat down and communicated that look, we got to find a balance because this we we got to make time for each other. Yeah, and so, um, what we would do is on certain days he'll cut his he'll cut his business days short, and he'll say, "Okay, we're gonna have date night on Friday, so I'll get off maybe about eight o'clock." And um, we can go and do something. And I'm like, cool, okay, great, we got date night. But what I had to learn to do, because he's been gone since 6 o'clock that morning, not coming home to 8 o'clock that night, he doesn't need to worry about like where we're going, what he's going to wear, none of that. So I have all of that laid out. I have his clothes pressed, iron, ready to go. All he has to do is come home, take a shower. We're out the door and we're hanging out. And I know that I have about a two to three hour window to spend time with him before he fully gets tired because he has been up. Mm -hmm. A long time. And I make the best of that time. Like, we make the best of that time. We catch up, we talk, we laugh, mm -hmm. we spend time together. That's what it's about. I think people always um, overthink the time spending. Yeah, and our I time spending can be easy. Sometimes it's in between... His business day. If it's a Saturday, he's doing his business all day. He's like, hey, babe, let's meet up. Let's go get some wings. We meet up at a spot. We get some wings. I got an hour to spend. My husband, cool. You go back to business. You go back to doing what you got to do. You got to make it work for you. And, and especially for the women out there who want nice things, you have to remember what the Bible says. I didn't make this up. It says if you don't work, you don't eat. <laughs> Not in that form, but it's like by the <laughs> By the, the sweat of your eyebrows, something like that. But uh -huh. if you don't work, you don't eat. Uh -huh. You know, you can't want red bottoms and your guy only working some uh, part time. <laughs> exactly. Unless he's a, a multi millionaire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. for us working people, you know, you want to you you want a nice car. Yeah. You know, you want to go out and eat at the nice restaurants. Mm -hmm. You want nice things. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to be able to spend money and have parties and go out to parties and, you know, dress nice and look nice and buy nice makeup, matte makeup. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to buy the, 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 you know, you want to get your hair braided. Yeah. I'm not talking about you. I'm just <laughs> naming some things. And but so you. You know, it kind of sound like you would. You named all the stuff kind of like, so I just. In the court of law, you are proven guilty. <laughs> and so these are some of the things that you want to have in your life. Yeah. And if your husband is going to provide those things, guess what yes, you have sure. to do? You have to allow your husband to go out and, you know, make it happen. Yeah, yeah. And so if you don't want it, if you just want a loser, a bum, and somebody to be around with you and hold you and console you yeah. the whole time, go ahead. Yeah. Get married to him. But see, the problem comes when if I have a conversation with you about needing time 
and you don't prioritize time with me. That's where the issue comes because you have to. So he works and I don't like. Oh, wait a minute. Okay, your question went by so fast. Let me, let me, um. Yeah, you're you right, back. Nicole. It should be some balance. But that's anytime, what I was just going to get into. Okay, you can go get ahead, into No, go ahead, baby. But no, but anytime, for like us, whenever you work in a startup business, it's going to require whoever working that business, you're going to require most of their time. Yeah, and a lot of time. And so a initially. lot of their time. So in the beginning, yes, when you look at, you know, even when you look at Jay-Z and Beyonce, mm -hmm. who have, who are now almost billionaires, in the beginning, they didn't spend that time like that together. Mm -hmm. She on the road, he on the road, he doing concert, she doing a concert. You know, they on the run tour. Yeah. And all this crazy nonsense, but at the same time, somebody had to sacrifice something. Yeah. And so you have to be willing to sacrifice, because what makes... A, a successful relationship. What, what's the foundation of a successful relationship? We know that it's God, but it's also love. And what requires love is sacrifice. Yeah. And the only way that you see how much someone love you if they sacrifice for you. Yeah. And so if the man is sacrificing, because some have to be sacrificed. Mm -hmm. If you want to be successful in life, some have to be. That's why you, when you see multimillionaires, most of them are single. Yeah. Because nobody wants to go through that sacrificial stage. Mm -hmm. Of that process mm -hmm. for him to do what he had to do. Mm -hmm. So you know what he said? He said, you know what? I ain't going to be with nobody. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to do me and be successful. Yeah. And I catch somebody on the back end. Yeah. But see, the thing about it is, and, and I, I think you just touched on it, is balance. Because in marriage, marriage requires time spent together. And so I mm -hmm. saw your question, Yolanda. You say you just don't say anything, but you have to say something. Yeah, you because have to. Now, it's not saying something like, if now, if you're needy and he got to be in your face 24-7, then that's unrealistic. I think if you have a realistic expectation about the time you should be able to spend with your husband, you got to say something. Because if you're not spending time together, Together. You're not investing in the marriage. You're not investing into each other. And so you're not growing together. You got to find a balance of time. And it's okay to communicate that. And one thing mm -hmm. I would say on your end is find some creative ways to incorporate time into his schedule. Because when men are, are working and they have this tunnel vision about making money and setting goals that way, they're not really thinking about over here, I need to incorporate my wife and time spent with my wife into this most times. And so what you have to do is become creative in cultivating that time and creating that time that you can spend together with him. Even like I said, if it's just, hey, babe, I'm going to meet you for lunch. Where you stopping at? I'm going to drop by. I mean, it's just just those moments like that. And be mm -hmm. honest. I think, like somebody said earlier about being vulnerable. What we don't do a lot of times is be vulnerable with each other. And you got to be vulnerable in marriage to move forward. And when I say vulnerable, I don't mean to the point where you're yelling and cursing to get your point across or going off to get your point across, but simply sitting him down and saying, look, love, I love, this is how I do my husband and it works every single time like I love spending time with you dude like you my best friend like I have absolutely fun with you like I miss you I need some time I need some laughter I need some I need to tell you about what happened all week with me like I miss you I need time with you and he'll say okay babe you know that's no problem what's up you know and we'll schedule it and so I think just being giving your husband your or your wife your heart to say I need time with you I need time to reconnect with you. You know what I'm saying? That's how you have to give it to them in the sweetest way. I think words are always based upon how the tone is and what you give them. You got to be able to let them know. And time with the long way. For the working husbands, making the effort to spend time will go. Absolutely, Sean. Yeah. I, I, you absolutely hit the nail on point. When you make an effort to spend time, it does go a long way. Because one thing that you have to know about life, you never want to look back on your life. And say, hey, I had these 40 years of working hard and my marriage fell apart. Because if truly your desire and your intent and the reason why you're working is to be able to provide for your family and make sure your family is okay. If I'm telling you we're falling apart because you work too much, then you're doing the opposite of mm -hmm. what your intent is anyway. If your true intent is for us to build and grow and be together and, and, and you're giving too much time to a business or to a job that's tearing us apart, you are already doing the opposite. And so you got to say, like you said, it, it's a sacrifice on both yeah. ends. I think you always got to look at it at the heart of everything. Yes, we need to eat. Yes, we need to make sure our basic needs are met. Now, if you want a little more time, what I may have to cut out is some of the wants that you have. So we'll sit down and we'll have a real conversation. And Ronald does it mm -hmm. all the time. Okay, babe, you want me to cut back a little bit so this is what's going to happen. Some of that extra stuff we've been able to do, I'm not going to be able to do that until X, Y, Z because now I'm just going to only be able to hit this and make this kind of money here. Yeah. You, it's a sacrifice. And let me jump in because a lot of times, even just something simple, like we went to the store 
to uh, get the kids some school stuff. Yeah. And my wife, she just went ballistic. She just went to picking up stuff, throwing it in the container. And I had to make her realize, see, this is why I work so much. <laughs> no, because we don't get a chance to see that. And yeah. when it happened that way, we as men have to show them, okay, look, you want to have a party? Okay, this we can have a party. Yeah. But this is why I work so much. Yeah. yeah. You want those shoes? Mm-hmm. You want that nice dress? <laughs> This is why I work so much. Not saying that the woman don't work and her money do bring value mm-hmm. into the house. Mm-hmm. But most of the time, even if I'm paying all the bills and you're doing what you want to do with your money, that's part of me working hard. Because mm-hmm. I still have to maintain, the you know, all the bills. Mm-hmm. Good friend who's married and her, her husband separated right now, but she is going in a state of depression. I try my hardest to keep her upbeat. It's not working. Well, I... I, I, I and I think, uh, Latifah, in that situation, like, separations and divorces are very hard on marriages. And I don't, I didn't catch how long they had been married, but if they've been married a while or even just a short period, anytime the dissolution of marriage happens, it is a blow. It is, a lot of people reference it, that I hear, reference it to, like, almost like a death of a sort. And so mm. you have to understand that it may be a seasonal piece that she's going through. And sometimes sadness and hurt and pain, that's a normal place. Now, the depression piece is what I would say would get a little more worried if she if she festers there. But I think you have to give her that time to actually go through that grieving process for her marriage. Because people think a lot of times when marriage marriages don't work out that you're not supposed to grieve about them. You're supposed to grieve about them. If your heart yeah, was truly the there process. and you truly loved somebody and poured out your whole heart to somebody and, and, and you had in your mind that you were going to spend your life with somebody and it didn't work out that way, you should grieve about it. Mm-hmm. And so I think first give her a little time to grieve, support her, encourage her, you know, pray for her, give her a little word on it, but be there with the watchful eye just to make sure she doesn't go too far in depression, but give her a little room to really let her heart kind of pour out and really deal with the feelings that she has because it's probably where she is in it just really dealing with the emotional piece of it but just be there as a friend of support and definitely just pray for her and give her some um some some support mm-hmm. yeah i think somebody had asked to, uh made a comment um said their husband is always on the computer a lot a lot mm-hmm. turn this one all on. let me see no me time what can i do her husband is always on a computer no me time what can she do throw the computer away no, don't throw the computer away. Throw your clothes away and get in front of the computer. I was just playing. No, don't throw the computer away. I was just playing. Throw but no. your clothes away and get in front of the computer. Attention. That's an attention I, I, I get it. I get it. I, and you know what? And, and I'm, I'm, I'm down for the drastic measures. But I will say that you got to be able to communicate with your husband. Effective communication, yeah. Really, because this is the thing that, I, that we typically see when we coach couples. If his attention is to the computer and that's where his desire to put it is, why has his desire shifted from desire and interaction with my oh, wife? Now that's me, what you got to get down to the no, root of. But let me ask, is he, he may be working on the computer. Yeah, he could be. So his job may require him to be on the computer. And so then you got to get back to balance. Balance. And having, still having that conversation like, hey, babe. And then you know what? Do you guys have a cutoff period? Have you established in yeah, your marriage good. a cutoff period? That's because good. one that's thing good. I noticed about marriage is, too, we don't have boundaries. We think that once we get mar- married, these invis- invisible boundaries just automatically go up and people know how to move in them. No, you have to establish boundaries in your marriage and your relationship. So I would say, talk to your husband and say, hey, babe. You know, I know you're working, I know you're doing whatever you're doing on the computer, but can we establish a timeline for the computer where you won't be on it so that I can have a little time with you? So let's say maybe 9 o'clock you're off of it, and that can be our time together um, every day. You know, you got to establish those kinds of things to keep to keep people in line now, to spend time let me, together. Let me throw this in. Mm-hmm. Now, you can't say, okay, let's have a cutoff period, which is 9 o'clock. Mm-hmm. And when the cutoff period comes, you either have nothing to say, or you want to argue. <laughs> True. Because that could be a reason why somebody retreats and does something else. Yeah. So yeah. that's going to automatically make me go back to my comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Because if, if, if every time I cut off at 9 o'clock, so you're trying to tell me, you oh, it's 9.09. Yeah. And you, okay, all right, turn the computer back on. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, that's why I said I think first got to get down to why. 
the computer is even the desire. Like, why mm -hmm. is the desire to spend that much time on the computer even there? Then you got to have an honest conversation. You got to be willing to hear the truth. Because sometimes we want to know things, but we don't really want to know things. And that's a big problem. And that's most of the time, women... It's like that. Yeah, yeah. Because it, they want to know, but they really don't want to know. Well, you want to know, but you don't want to deal with the Say hurt and the realness that see, it's going to bring. But look, men, agree, tell me if you agree. I want to know, but I really don't want to know. <laughs> I want you to say it, but I really don't want you to see it. That's confusing. I dude. want you to say it a certain way. What? <laughs> so that is the problem that I have with women. Uh, no. You guys really don't know what you want. We know what we want. Know what you want. We know what we want. What do you want to eat? Exactly. I already ate. I already so ate. most women, if you ask a woman, you say, hey, what do you want to eat? She's like, I don't know. But I don't ever take you out to eat. <sighs> so if I do take you somewhere, you're like, well, I really didn't want seafood. Prime example. My wife asked me, she Here said, look. <clears throat> prime example. My wife asked me, she said, no, she told me one day. She said, look, man, if you ever out and you home, you know what I'm saying, you bring me a a, a pizza, a, a personal pan pizza, but I want, um, what's the one with everything on it? Supreme. So one day I'm on the way home, I bring my wife a Supreme. I walk in the house, get what she tell me. I mean, I wanted pepperoni with extra cheese. <laughs> I mean, you should My mood know. changed that day. I did, that's not Women what I wanted. Don't know like, what they want. We know now, what if we a want. wife, if a wife bring her home, bring her husband home, baked chicken, green beans, and rice, it may not be what he wanted, but guess what he's gonna do? He's gonna eat it. And he's gonna be satisfied with mm. it. That's just like when you take a woman's shop, you say, hey, we're about to go to a party tonight. I want to take you. I want to get you something nice. She would not just go in and get that one nice dress. No, she would not. What she's going to do is she want to walk through every rack. She want to go through the sales side. She want to see what they got on this side. And this different type of brand that they're going to do. Men, I tell you right now, if, I, if you tell a man, say, hey, go Shine to the store those hands and up. get what you want. You know what a man going to do? He's going to go get him a shirt, a pair of pants, shoes, boom, he out of there. <laughs> <laughs> a woman, she got to go get makeup. She got to get yeah. lipstick. She got to go this. She don't know what color she want to wear. You know, for three weeks. <laughs> if the sun is out, you know what I'm saying? She want to wear green. <laughs> if it's, you know, kind of cloudy, she want to wear that dark brown with the orange shoes. Really? And so this is the problem that men have to face. That's why my prayer for the 30 days has been consistently about praying for the men. Helping them for their strength. Because we go through a lot. Yeah, I do. We do too. Men really go through a lot. After dealing with the stress of life, dealing with the stress of work, dealing with the stress of business, dealing with the stress of kids, everybody have unloaded on you, and now you have to go and get unloaded from this confused creature, <laughs> loving creature, emotional creature that God has created. Mm -hmm. And I thank God for my wife all the time, but I just wish that he would have, you know, shifted you guys' wires a little bit. <laughs> Like, you know, <laughs> no, we are perfectly and wonderfully made. But the thing about it is, um, you do have to be intentional about the time. And so to answer that question, I will say, have a conversation with your husband and let him know that how it makes you feel one, um, yeah. and how, and you guys to sit down and come up with a resolution, not just give a demand like, Hey babe, how can we resolve this? That it works for both That's of true. us That's because true. the ultimate goal is for us to spend the time together and reconnect and make sure that we're growing together because I love you and I married you and I want to spend time with you. And so we need to be able to do that effectively. I think that's what it comes down to. Just having that honest conversation. And one thing about growth guys, you can't grow in a marriage where there's no accountability. Oh, that's good. You cannot that's grow good. in a marriage that's where there is no accountability. If you cannot hold your spouse accountable or your spouse cannot hold you accountable, you absolutely will not grow because there will be numerous times where you will be completely wrong. You will be completely out of pocket and somebody needs to tell you no you out of pocket you wrong that can't work that way and you got to be willing to accept that and willing to hear that if there's no accountability mm -hmm. in marriage there's gonna be no growth guys and so we got to be able to hold each other accountable we see that so much in marriage that people shut down it's like your husband can't tell you nothing or your wife can't tell you anything and that's crazy like you got to be able to hear your spouse and you got to be able to be corrected by your spouse they got to be able to correct you. Like, if they can't correct you, you might as well be single and do what you want to do. Period. That's true.
That's it. You might as well do what you want to do. But if you're looking to have a marriage that's going to make you better and that you're going to grow better through the years and they're going to grow better and mm -hmm. collectively your marriage is going to get better, it's going to require accountability. It's going to accountability. It's going to require confrontation at yeah. times. And so people a lot of times in marriage try to avoid confrontation. Confrontation is like a stepping stone to the next level when you handle it right. When you handle confrontation it's right, it's a lesson. It's a stepping block. It's something that solidifies your marriage. It's like another brick you put in your marriage to hold it together, to build it. When you do confrontation right. Now, when you do confrontation wrong, it can completely tear down your house. It can completely tear down your marriage. That's why effective, effective communication is important. And that's why you got to be able to talk. There's no reason you should be able to talk to your homegirl about any and everything or talk to your mom or talk to your sister or talk yeah, to your brother true. or talk to your cousin about any and everything and you can't even talk to your spouse but going back once again when you talk to your spouse you hey is anything wrong nothing <laughs> so we have to start being vocal about what's our problem what is the issue what's yeah. going on within us yeah don't say nothing is wrong when something is wrong absolutely so if you got something to say go ahead and say it yeah and be tactful about it Let me yes say, be tactful about it yes just don't go on a tangent and just say some old crazy you know, off the wall nonsense, but you have to be tactful because yeah. you have to take in consideration that this person has feeling as well. Yeah. And the thing about it is, if I do say nothing wrong, but it's clear something wrong, at least fight to find out what's wrong. Like sometimes we feel like, okay, well, they don't want to say nothing. I'm, I'm done with it. No, sometimes we require just a little more attention. We want to feel like you really care what's going on with me. Well, and so sometimes fight to find out what's wrong. I think like, that's kind of hard sometimes because I'm like, hey, what's wrong? Nothing. What's wrong? Nothing. Okay, I'm like, at this point, <laughs> when you feel like you want to discuss what's wrong, write it down. Babe, text no. Me. No, I'm just joking, but you no. do have to fight for you it. You do have, have to fight it. because you sometimes, it it, there you go, you, you got to pull, pull it out because it sometimes out. it's not as easy to express. Or you may be dealing with a spouse that also... um you, I'll get, I, I, I'll get that Mia suggestions on correct confrontation. You may also be dealing with a spouse that doesn't know how to effectively communicate, and so right now they are caught, kind of caught up in their feelings, and so they need you to take them out that emotional place, so now they can verbalize what's going on, and so you have to kind of sometimes pull out what's wrong. Like you got, especially with women, because we'll get emotional real quick on you, and so for men, we feel like, oh, so now you don't know what's wrong. It's the same thing we were wrong last week. I mean, want, want me to tell you that too? I mean, so we want mm -hmm. you to be a little more engaged and put in a little more effort so we feel like you truly care about the heart of what's going on but with us. But if men is going to put in a little bit more effort, mm -hmm. what we need you guys to do is, is, you know, soften the heart a little bit. True. Soften the heart. Don't, you know, don't be so still. And in the Bible, we call it stiff neck. <laughs> stiff neck. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you got to think about it, man, because we'll be pulling, we'll be pulling. You know, at some point in tug of war, mm. somebody going to get tired of letting somebody go. Gotta mm -hmm. Somebody got to give. Somebody got to give. And I'm asking you, babe, what's wrong? Nothing. Same thing wrong with me last week. Well, I don't remember last week. I'm trying to focus on this week. You know, I'm forgetting those things that which are behind me. <laughs> and focusing on and those focusing. things. And really? so that's what, no, no, I'm serious. That's what we got to get to. But no, women don't want to do that. Yes. They want you to fall down on your knees and cry. And then if I do that, I'm weak. No. No. No, nobody don't want nobody to keep falling down crying. They got to keep falling down, but in key moments, See, now, it's this, okay. this, now, this way it get confusing. <laughs> it. So you want me to be soft and you want me to be hard. Come on, which one you want? Yes. The Bible said, let your yay be yay. Man, <laughs> let your yay be yay. Uh -huh. <laughs> let your no be no. no the so thing what about, do you The want? thing about it is you can't have a hard heart anyway. See, I think this is where men no. get the confusion from. Like, we don't want you to be crybaby soft. But we want you to have a heart, and a heart is soft. Like, we don't want you coming in the game with your little stone heart, and you can't never be touched by my feelings or my emotions. That's not what women want. If you have a heart, have a heart. And having a heart doesn't make you weak, and it doesn't make you strong. It makes you human. No, it is making you human. But you guys need to decide exactly what you want. Do you want a manly man? Or do you want to have a man? See, that's why this world is so confused now. No. So that's why people are changing size. <laughs> because think about it. A woman, she'll go get with another woman who look like a man. True. That for the confusing. emotional side. It's very true. Go. But and so that's the confusing part I'm talking about. Wait a minute. What do you want? If you ask a woman right now, you say, uh, a single woman, you say, hey, Miss Lady, you know, um, I'm single. Mm. 
Please tell me, what do you want? What are you looking for? I'm just looking for a good man, a man who can take care of me. I'm just, okay. And then when God gives you that, he gives you a good man who's going to take care of you, but he got an anger problem. He beat on women. He don't respect you. Yeah, that one but this is know. what you said you wanted. But we ain't say that much. No, but what I'm saying is this is what most women do. They say, hey, God, this is what I want. This is what I'm looking for. Would you give me this? And then he give you that. Mm. But it's just like I always say. The commercials. Mm. The commercial. <laughs> I like to use this analogy. Because what happens is, this is what happened in most commercials. You say, hey, look, man, take this pill right here. This pill will get rid of your headache. Uh-huh. But also it's going to cause stomach bleeding. Uh, <laughs> All sus- not coming out your nose. Suicide thoughts. Suicide thoughts. Possible thought, death. Just to cure that one thing. <laughs> now, women, same thing. Mm-hmm. We say we want a good man, but we don't read the side effects. Mm-hmm. So what we have to start doing is, is this something that I really want? Do I want these mm-hmm. side effects? Do I want this man who's six feet tall with a six pack and six figures? Mm-hmm. But he's crazy. Mm-hmm. He disrespectful. Mm-hmm. So what side effects do you want? What side effects are you willing to put up with? What Mia just said was awesome. We want a man that shows concern for all aspects of our life as we do for them. That's awesome. That's exactly what we want. That is All very good. aspects of our life. I, y'all need to get married to Jesus. <laughs> we are. Because you are Christ in our home. Are you not? Well, bow down and worship me. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? Like, <laughs> no, no, but that is no, very no, but that's good. That's good. But, but then that comes good. to what we're talking about. Because the reason a lot of marriages don't grow, because nobody's getting fed spiritually. And so if I'm at moments in my life in broken places, how can you help me? Heal if you're broken, and if you're not, if you don't, if you're not feel, how can you pour into? Now, man, let's go back, Mill. Now, let's go back to what you just said. Now, if that the case, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna give you all of those things. Mm-hmm. Now, when I talk about you being what Christ has called you to be, yeah, as a wife, as a wife, mm-hmm. a submissive wife, mm-hmm. then you don't want to do that. Wives do that. No wives do no, not. No, that's. Do I think. That. I think. That, I think that's where the struggle comes in, and that's no. Where it shouldn't be no struggle. Because if you want me to be there for you, as Minister Mill said, <laughs> you have to also... See, that's the problem. Let me I tell agree. You, let me show you what most people do with the Bible. Mm-hmm. This is what most people would do with the Bible. They take the full Bible, they take the part <laughs> that they want to use, they keep it, and they transfer the other part. <laughs> no, if you're going to take the Bible, take all of the Bible. True. You are to be a submissive wife. Uh, Nicole said true but define submissive. What do you mean? Sub to go under uh-huh. and, a mission. And men said submissive of, to you as you're submissive to him. Mm-hmm. That is good. Uh-huh. Oh, That's what the words that. say. I need all my pastor brothers <laughs> to point your hand <laughs> towards your PC, your phone right now. Our minds are renewed to biblical definition. Absolutely, Irene. She no. said submission and respect can be distorted until our minds are renewed through the biblical definition. Absolutely. It is. I it think is. you have you have to understand. See, this is the thing. So many people are professing to have a godly marriage with no God. That's good. And they have no word. And so when you have no you. word, you're not able to really follow this godly marriage outline that God has in- encrypted That's into true. his Bible. That's true. Like we don't have we don't we don't know submission because we don't know God. If you don't know and we've always said that if as a man or a woman you don't know submission to God, you will not be able to submit in your in your marriage. Yeah. Because who are you submitting to? So yeah, I submit to my husband as he is submits unto God, but before I ever submit to him, I know how to submit to God. Like, and I know how to let God hold me accountable, correct me, guide me, lead me. So it's no problem letting my husband do that. Mm-hmm. Because you are, I see you doing it and God doing it in your life, so I'm going to follow you. I'm going to let you guide me. I'm going to let you lead me. I'm going to let you um support me and Encourage me, hold me accountable. I'm going to let you do all those things because I know you do it in Christ. But see, the moment you start to move and operate outside of Christ, and so now you're doing it in Ronald, like, you can't lead me in Ronald. You're going to be wrong, dude. Like, you're not going to know which way to go. But if you're leading me in Christ, we can go anywhere together. We can do anything together because I know at the end of the day, he's going to make sure our path is the right path. Mm -hmm. So many people in marriage don't do that. That's why we're talking about incorporating God into your marriage to be able to grow. You've got to yeah, be seeking good. God. If you guys aren't having real conversations about 
God, about your spirit, about where your spirit is. Like I just came in the house the other day and I told my husband, and you know, it always gets like this when we start doing um, the 30 days of prayer for marriage. My spirit was heavy, like heavy, heavy. Like I really was feeling just down, you know, and, 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 and just discouraged. Yeah. And so I came and told my husband, I feel down, discouraged, tell him. So he automatically went into prayer. We automatically went back, you know, and he brought me back full circle. If you don't know how to do that, in a marriage, you're not going to grow together. God has to be the guiding force. He has to be the alpha, the omega. He has to be the beginning and the end, everything. He has to be the navigation system. And you got to start having real conversations as you're connecting as husband and wife. Like, we have real spiritual conversations. Yeah. Like, really, like, where do I want to be? Where am I trying to go spiritually? What is God doing in my life? What has God spoken into my life? What is God holding me accountable for? What season am I in with God? What season? And are you in with God? When mm -hmm. you're not doing that in a marriage, you're not having real conversations. Man, I need this back. Charge is going to go out. So you got to be able to incorporate God into your marriage or relationship. We That's pray true. every night together. That's before and um, doing 30 days of prayer. We pray every night together. And it took a very long time to get to the point where we pray even in our madness. Like early on, it used to be. So we just ain't going to pray tonight because I'm mad at him. He ain't talking to me. I ain't talking to him. Okay. We don't do that anymore, but time has done that. Mm -hmm. Time has grown us. God has grown us in our marriage. God has gotten us to a place that we now know it's not about us. And so whether I we're mad at key. each other or that's not, we got to be covered. We got to cover our house. We got to be thankful. We got to be grateful. We got to acknowledge God. And so whether I'm mad at him and he's mad at me, we still got to acknowledge God together. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. And that comes with growth. That comes with time. That comes with making a lot of mistakes. That comes with being mad at each other. A lot of nights going to sleep angry. And that comes with being held accountable. So there are still times where we may get into it and I'm mad and he's like, so we ain't going to pray tonight? And I may say, I guess. And he's like, oh, okay. That, that's, that's real Christian of you. I guess, you know, that's the right thing to do. But, you mm -hmm. know, I'll still pray for you. And then, and then I'm like, okay, Conviction. you know what? Yeah, yeah. It convicts me. You being real, real childish. You know what I'm saying? So at the end of it, you got to have God to grow in a marriage. God gives the increase like the word says you can that's plant true. you can water but only god gives the growth only god gives the increase that's guys that's and good. that's what marriage is about that's what true marital growth is about stop spending your time out here talking about the have and the have not empire all this other garbage all this other love and hip-hop stuff you out there conversating about it on a date night that that, that adds no value to your marriage hear me out that adds no value to your marriage it no. does nothing it had no value to your marriage, but the King of Thrones, what was the, what was the watch last night? Ah, no, that's in leisure time. I said don't hold take on, it. On, on, I said on, don't on, take on. it and be talking about it on your date night. I'm looking at y'all. Just me and y'all. You ain't be hating no, on what Game is this of thing, Thrones. King, like, Game of Thrones. You be hating on Game of Thrones. Every now, opportunity you get. I told my wife I want to have a spiritual conversation. She said, No, we, you did not. She said, she said, we got to do it before nine. <laughs> <laughs> because the Game of Thrones is coming on. Oh. And I'm trying to let her know that God is on the throne. Sean, get your boy. Get God your boy. Because he's going to he he be coming stand with y'all in a minute. God is boy. on the throne, but she want to watch the king of thrones. <laughs> Me said, but the have and have not so good. <laughs> God, I'm serious. Like, I like my different shows, too. Like, I'm not knocking what you like to watch in your leisure time. All I'm saying is you got to have conversations of substance, guys. It can't always be this... Um, superficial stuff that the world feeds us. You got to have deep, meaningful, connecting conversations with your spouse. You got to be able to do that in a marriage. And we always talk about having check-ins. It's so many people that they go and they have date nights, but you don't check in about nothing. Like we have check-ins every month. So we want to know what's going right, what's going wrong, what can I do better, what's been great for us this month, um, what, what did you do good. Work, yeah. And sometimes I come to the table, I don't have any complaints. It's been an awesome yeah. month. <laughs> Praise God. Glory to God. No, I said saying, praise no, God. No, you're wrapping up, taking out the credit. Y'all saw that. But no, sometimes it's, 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 it's awesome. And you don't have anything bad yeah. to say. And, and sometimes, sometimes it's rough. All like, hell has broken loose. Yes, and it's rough. And we have that conversation. But when you check in, you don't carry weight that you don't need to carry to the next month. You don't carry issues into the next season of your marriage. You go ahead and you deal with them and you strategically plan hey, on how to move from that point. Let, let me take a moment. Let me take a moment right quick. And I want everybody to hear this. Um, the spirit, the sexual spirit just spoke to me. The sex. God has released something out of the atmosphere. 
for me to release unto husbands. Mm -hmm. Go. Let me ask you guys a question. Let me ask women, you women, a question. Why if you know your husband wants sex and you know that's what he's desiring at that time, why don't you just give it to him? You make him just sit there and beg for it, or you just make him, like, you know that's what he want. That'll calm him down. That'll de-stress him. And then you guys just sit there and be like. <laughs> because it's very hard. I think it's very hard if you're if you're in conflict to now, I'm and just then, all of a sudden go to let me just give and him this, some. This is the good thing about it. You Then the women ask the question, like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> oh, I already know what's wrong with you. You want some, right? That's You want some, right? I mean, I mean, I ain't mean to change the subject. <laughs> you changed it, but he released it. He didn't release that he to you. You just it. wanted to talk about it. <laughs> you just wanted to talk about it. He, he didn't released release that. It. No, it's very hard okay. to. That's the same. I, we could very well say that for you men. Like when we're in conversation. No, 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 no. Let me just say it. We can say this for men. Why is it not that when we're in a heated argument, you guys are gonna say, "You know what, love? I'm sorry." Let me just give you $200 and you just go shopping and do what you want to do with it. Because you know why we don't do that? We don't want our, we don't, we don't want a gold digging wife. We don't want a, we don't we want don't, a, a sex digging husband. You don't want to see <laughs> <laughs> Come on now, who don't I'm want just, a sex digging no, husband? No, I'm saying in a term that you're using it, you don't want to be, now, you don't want to just feel like that's your only reason for coming. Like at the end of okay, the day, so let's look, get, okay. sex doesn't resolve so, so, the so, issue. So this is just a prostitute marriage then. No. At the end of the I day, I give you two hundred. You give me six. Come on. <laughs> no, but what real, happened to the godness in this thing, man? For real talk, sex or money or that situation, none of those situations resolve the issue at hand. No, so whether I drop and give you sex, that does not resolve our issue. We need no. to communicate about the issue, and then we can freely have that. Well, we already communicated. I told you, I wanted some. You ignored me. One day you ignored me. Two days. No, and, and, and then so, and then she should be able to verbalize why she ignored you. What no, the problem I don't, is? I don't need you to verbalize. I need you to unbutton. See what I'm talking? Like we real talking. Like, I don't got time for that with you. What you mean? Then you're not us all off subject. No, people need to hear this. Oh my god. Hey, if you need to hear this, well, most men, I don't want to get you guys in she trouble. Sex with here before money. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Abel. <laughs> So I don't want you guys, oh, we got people come to raise your hand or none of that good stuff. But no, I just wanted to bring the issue up because I think it needs to be talked about. What? How do you start praying together when your husband used to it or not ready? Your husband not used to it or not ready. I raised in the church, but not him, not to get off subject. No, you're not off subject. Ron always take us off subject, Corey. So you are right on subject. Um, I didn't even start praying together when you Okay, so one thing I think is to really sit down and have an honest conversation about with your husband about prayer. Because a lot of times we don't take the time to find out why our spouse may be a little resistant to uh, to religious things or to spiritual things. Mm -hmm. And That's so good. I think sometimes first find out what's the barrier, what's the stopping place. Is he really not willing to do it? Or is it just that he, he know doesn't how. know how? And Ron says this all the time because a lot of time people just don't know how. And for a man that does not know how being with a woman that's been heavily raised in the church and probably can set the church on fire with her prayer, that can be intimidating. And so because he's supposed to be the head and he's supposed to be the on the lead and so now if you're coming yeah, um as Juanita Bynum and he doesn't really know you know how to step into that thing and kind of pray that can be intimidating that can see that can be um that can make him feel you know insecure. yeah insecure That's what I was looking is, for. Th this is the problem because you can speak in tongues and you can shout and he looking at you like wow man yeah. that is amazing hey, and then you say okay you, I need you to lead us in prayer <laughs> what <laughs> I and if, and if the guy don't know how to lead in a prayer, he ain't going to want to just come out because you have spoken in tongues. You done gave us the King James Version. Mm -hmm. You have really set the house on fire. Mm -hmm. And now you're saying, look, I need you to lead us in prayer. Yes. And one thing I will say about it is that, like Rhonda just said, um, find out what's the resistance. Start slowly. Um... Start slowly with prayer and then let his prayer be whatever his prayer is. What we've seen some people do that one person is, knows how to pray and the other one doesn't is that the husband would say the prayer. The wife would come behind. Now, the husband prayer may be quick, short, sweet, pray for the family, pray for covering, whatever it's done. And the wife comes back and adds like this next five minutes of prayer. 
that totally undermines his confidence yeah. in what he just gave you in prayer. So what I would say is start by letting him pray and let his prayer, no matter the length, the time, the words, let that be the prayer and for the And encourage that prayer. And encourage, and encourage that prayer. Encourage that prayer with As some, he's amen. Praying. Yes. Amen. Yes. And when he finished, like, what? Babe, God. that was awesome. Thank you for praying with us. Encouragement. Encourage him. Absolutely. Yeah. And Absolutely. even if he have, and what you have to do is, if you know that your spouse is not there, mm -hmm. You go to the prayer closet and you begin to pray Absolutely. for him. Absolutely. Pray for that. Pray for that to be released in him. Yeah. Yeah. Here's when I realized he really was uncomfortable to pray over us and it was just us and our daughters here. I'll try again. I'm just so pushing. <laughs> and definitely, Corey, if you know you're pushing at something about yourself, back up a little bit. Because yeah. men don't want to be um kind of Force. stronghold yeah. into a situation. They want to ease into it. Now, when, and what Ronald said was just key. I think that's where you start. You start in your prayer closet, yeah, your true. prayer with God, and you say, God, release in my husband prayer so that he will begin to pray for our family. Encourage him. Guidance. Give him the words to say, Father God. And put in me what is needed to support his growth in that area. You take it to God and you take it to God to grow your husband. And so you yeah. support him in that. And you back up a little bit. If if he doesn't pray, if he's frustrated and it's the day he doesn't pray, then, you know, he doesn't pray. But you don't you don't condemn him for not doing it in that moment as somebody's learning. And that's, that's, that is real key that you shouldn't do that. Mm -hmm. Don't be like, you ain't going to pray? Yeah. I get, I pray for us, y'all. Yeah. Because he... he uh, we need you to pray for us. Yeah. We need you to lead this Absolutely. family. We need you to... Men shut down on that. Yeah. Because your daughters are watching. And you just said for him to pray for the family and for the girls. So if your daughters are there and they're watching, I mean, I think it may need to start with you two praying. And not even incorporate the girls right now. Because mm -hmm. let him get a little more comfortable in, in the prayer with you in, two yeah. rather than doing with the girl. Corey said that's exactly <laughs> me wrong. Yeah, Corey, back that on real reel that in real quick. Like, yeah, reel, that in, reel that in real quick. But you can pray for him and you can pray for God to release that in him. I, I think one thing in marriage that we don't do that we do with children, and we always say it, we're always very supportive of the um beginning points of children and so when children learn to begin to walk we're always so supportive of that we celebrate it like a child can get up take two steps and fall we like oh my god great job we cheering singing dancing mm -hmm. it's a whole celebration they fall they get back up they move again they can go potty train they drop one little trinket of pee in the toilet we oh my god yeah great some might hit the floor we don't care they're getting the concept that's the same thing in any area mm -hmm. of your marriage where somebody begins to grow you got to support them through it you got to count every little effort that they put into it and you cannot tear them down as they're building as they're learning yeah, you can only good. encourage because just like children once you start to point out the wrong stuff they shut down like mm -hmm. and that's a key example because i was working with my five-year-old son the other day and we were doing words and writing and it, i got so frustrated with him because i'm like did you not see how i just made that that's how you make it and he was just doing his own thing and i saw myself getting frustrated and i saw him shutting down and god instantly got me like He's mm -hmm. not he's not hearing you anymore. He has totally shut down. Your whole mood has transitioned and changed. You're not patient with him. It's shutting him down. You need to regroup. So I walked away. We group came back with all this extra love, extra support, extra patience. The more he messed up, the more I encouraged him. And by the time we were done, he was doing it perfect. And so that's the same thing I would say, Corey, that you got to do in that situation. Just encourage your husband. Don't push him too much. Still cover him. Still pray for him. Pray for the girls. But, you know, just support him in that process. Yeah. And if you ever notice, a lot of people can't sing in church. Mm -hmm. But when they start yes. to sing, everybody's like, you sing, Church is the place for anybody you to sing. sing. For anybody to sing. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. If you can't do anything, go to church. <laughs> yes, Latifa, your rider. He was extra. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that is so true. So you got to support each other through the process. But you mm -hmm. got to spend time with God, guys. You got to spend time communing with God, having conversations with God. You and your spouse got to spend time studying the word. and Make it fun, man. I think yes. we have, with, with men, I think we, we have to get the excitement of it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We and and that's something that I had to learn over the years. Yeah. You know, because when and and please learn that the King James version is not the only version. Please. Because what happens is most men, you give us the King James version and the thou have it not and the do it. You know what I'm saying? That loses us totally. Yeah. And so when you give us something that we can read, something quick, something. How what you know, me? I was just me and ex house. So I okay. was asking what go ahead, baby. And so I think we have to 
bring that out, mm -hmm. that excitement, because the Bible is really fun. Oh, my when God. You, when you the begin stories, to read, the, the storylines of it, man, it is yeah. really cool. Once and the start, revelation God gives you from yeah. it. Like, we relate reason, so much to our marriage. Yeah, and the reason why um, we know mm -hmm. that the Bible is fun, because God is always talking to my wife. <laughs> God is always telling her something. <laughs> You know the shade, guys. Y'all feel that shade that. just come? He does. That's the anointing. I'm does. giving. I'm giving. I'm saying that you are one with God. <laughs> Man, say, how do you make studying the Bible fun? Um, for me, um, I like to dig up. I'm a storyteller, so I he like is. to dig up stories. Um, one of the things because I got a creative mind, I got a a good imagination. So even if I don't read it and I listen to it, mm -hmm. my mind automatically start. To build a story. Yeah. And so one of the things, I listen to NPR a lot. And yeah. so NPR, I don't know if you guys listen to NPR, but if you listen to NPR, on Saturday morning, they do plays. Yeah. And so sometimes I just sit in the car and they'll be doing a play. It drives me crazy. And I just started like visualizing the play. I have the stage and everything set up. Everything. And so I would pick Hi, a story. Um, yeah, I would pick a story, a short story. And I'll start to put, I'll, not so much that I change the Bible, but I'll start to put... Um, I'll attach different known names. Yeah. So I will put her name or I'll put, you know, Nicole name into different names to be able to tell the story. Yeah. Make it very creative, exciting. Exciting. So yeah. one of one of the one of my main stories that a lot of guys like to hear is the infidelity story about David. Mm -hmm. You know, David was up on a building and you know, he was downtown in in, in, in this uh, uh condo <laughs> and he just happened to see Toshiba. <laughs> But it wasn't Toshiba, it was Kiki. He seen Kiki taking a shower in the room below him and you know, he asked, yes, Who I is mean. who is Kiki? And uh <laughs> Daryl went and said, Oh, you know, that's uh bro uh Tony. That's his wife, the one who you had sent over there in Summer Hill to do some work for you. Yeah, that's his wife. And so okay, tell her to come here. And so when she came, you know, they laid on the threshing floor. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, the threshing floor is a term that, you know, the Bible used for, like, sexual intercourse. And so they, you know, they had intercourse and had a baby. And, and it talks about how God forgave David for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so they're, they're just one of the storylines that I like to tell. But I think when you take the Bible and you read it in a in a version that you truly understand, you can easily relate it to yeah, life. That, like, that, you can that's easily have thing. a conversation about it. And the NIV is very... Yeah. Uh, in lamest terms. Yeah, yeah. And if you really want to go very lame, you can go to the Messenger Bible. I oh, mean, yeah. Really. The Messenger, how you think you talking to your homegirl. Right. It does. It's right. so, it's so everyday conversation. But what I tend to do is I read all of them. And so I try to see where it changes, where it because shifts it to get does. my understanding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so you want to make sure. I think, application study the Bible is great. Yeah, the life it application is, is. is too. That because is. at the end of it, you want to understand how to apply it. Definitely what you just said, that yeah. life application. You can read the word of God all day. You can enjoy it together. But if you can't apply it to your life, and if you can't apply it to your understanding to be able to grow from it, you can't, it's, it's not going to help you. It's not going to help mm. you at all. And so you got to make sure that you get the Bible for understanding. But also, a lot of times what I understand from it and what hubby gets from it are two different things, it but is. they both make sense. And so then we're sharing knowledge with each other and we're both growing from both of our understandings. Well, I think also even just going back to the application part, mm -hmm. I think you had the first, you know, we pray for understanding. Mm -hmm. So it's like before you can even say a word, you got to understand the letters and the vowels and how they are pronounced. Yes. And so, yes, when you read it, you may not get the full revelation of it at that particular mm -hmm. time. But once you start it, eating more of that word, you'll begin to not only just eat it, but you'll be able to digest it and get the revelation out of it. Yeah. So we have to start at some point Yeah. just to begin to open up the Bible. Uh, now, it, it, with technology, you can listen to it. Yeah. And absolutely. how do you learn most of the songs that you hear? Yeah. Because you hear it. It says, faith come by hearing and hearing of the word of God. Yeah. So when you hear a song on the radio, you know the reason why they play it 15, 20, 30 mm -hmm. times? It, it's repetitive. Mm -hmm. They get your mind to yep. start connecting. So to when memorize. you hear it, yep. even if you don't want to know the song, the you more you hear it, <laughs> you start singing it. Exactly. And so the more you hear it, the more you know, you say it, and the more you know it. Yeah. So just like the Bible, the more you hear it, yeah. the more you know it, the more you say it, and then you start to digest it, then yeah. you start to understand it. Yeah. And then once you understand it, you can begin to now share mm -hmm. the fruits 
of your label, mm -hmm. of your seeds that has been sold. And one thing about it that you always taught me too is that stop trying to study books and start breaking it down what you study together. Yeah. Like it, digest little pieces. And I yeah. think that's where couples get messed up at, especially when we're trying to start out. It's like, okay, we're going to read all these chapters and then we're going to talk about it. we read the whole book it. of John. Yeah, and it's like, it's a lot of stuff to go down in John. Yeah. Like, I mean, you really got to chop it up. And so I think what you got to do is sometimes start as small as a, as a verse. And like, a, yeah, and that's real good. I didn't mean to cut yeah. off, but mm -hmm. it's real good because one verse can take you three months to understand it. Yes. Even if you take the first verse in the Bible. Mm-hmm. The first verse mm -hmm. in the Bible. Mm -hmm. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. In the beginning. Mm -hmm. What is the beginning? Mm -hmm. So you have all... What is the beginning? The beginning mm -hmm. is the start of something. Mm -hmm. So in the start of something... Mm -hmm. And so you can keep going on and yeah. on and on. So Digging you have to break it. down mm -hmm. each word to really get that understanding of what that word is saying. Yeah. And yeah. so once you start doing that, now I mean you can get it, man. You just have to be consistent. Because mm -hmm. even with reading the Bible, even with doing anything in life, you have to be consistent. Even when working out, if you want to see results, you have to have consistency. Yeah. Even with reading the Bible, you have to have consistency. Because yeah. what happens is the enemy is always lurking. He coming like a roaring lion, mm -hmm. seeking who he can devour. Mm -hmm. So what happens is you start reading the Bible, you start falling asleep. Not yes. that it's getting boring to you, yes. but the 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 the, the uh, demonic spirit starts no, distraction. That's distraction it. Mm -hmm. and start putting you in the chokehold. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. And so every time you start listening, like you crank up your Bible out right now. Yeah, all over all over my toes. <laughs> <laughs> you start listening to the Bible out right now. Guess who's gonna call? Yep. Your, your home girl. Yes, with so girl, much to tell you. <laughs> guess what? Guess what just happened, girl? Now you were just about to go in. On Genesis or Ephesians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ephesians 5. Mm -hmm. You were just about to go in. Talking about how Christ, you know what I'm saying, love. <laughs> how Christ, how the husband, how to, how, to, how to love your wife as Christ loved the church. Yeah. You were just about to go in there because, mm -hmm. you, you know, I got to shut some of my husband when I get home. Yeah. And as soon as you hit play on the thing, she called. Mm -hmm. Girl, guess what they talking about on Facebook? You ain't going to believe <laughs> it. Nicole said calling with the T. <laughs> yes. <laughs> So and, it's just like when we say you gotta nah, be but intentional. I was, hold on, y'all. I was trying to finish, and she just you got. Oh, go ahead, love. I'm sorry. Sorry. No. See, just like that. Just like that. <laughs> just like that. That's what you gotta say. <laughs> I don't even forgot what I was saying. I mean, I don't even care. <laughs> After that, just what just happened. I don't even care what goes on. I cannot on. with you. I'm trying, I had something to say, babe. You just told me. Oh, you have to be intentional. That's what I was going to say. That's why you have to be intentional about the time you spend with God, the time you spend with each other. You got to be intentional. It does not just happen on its own. That's what I was going to say, love. And so this whole thing about growth that we're talking about is being intentional about it. That growth in your marriage is not going to happen. No matter if you married for 10 years, 15, 20 years, you got to be intentional about making sure is growing, making sure you're feeding it what it needs to be fed, making sure that you're not neglecting it. You got to be mm -hmm. able to have some real conversations with each other. Um, one thing we do too annually we have a look back and we have a look forward. That's what we call a look back, look forward. Mm -hmm. And so we always check in about where we've come in the last year as we're celebrating our anniversary. Mm -hmm. Like um, what was great? What were some hard times? What were some teaching moments? What were some great points? What else? Um, where do we want to go from here? And then we look, we have the looking for like where do we plan to be in the next year what areas do we want to cultivate where do we want to see yeah. our children where do we want to see our businesses where do we want to see each other where do we want to see our love grow um because one thing about it marriage is supposed to be a reflection of the love of god and so many people have lost what marriage truly is about it's love supposed to be that total dies. agape love it's that total of reflection so when people see your marriage they're supposed to see the love of god within it and people are not seeing your marriage and there's they're not seeing or feeling god then you have lost incorporating him into your marriage and that's what true marital growth is about you see that over a lifetime you see that grow every year you see that get stronger with the couple because they're growing spiritually they're growing emotionally they're growing together and that true oneness is happening and so you have to ensure that you try to make that happen in your marriage you have to be intentional about it you have to be committed to it mm-hmm 
one thing we were talking about nowadays, people aren't committed to anything. We're committed no. when we're comfortable and it works for us. But That's the true. moment that it becomes challenging and I'm not getting what I I'm want, out. I'm this out. Is... I'm no longer committed. I don't want to give you what I said I was going to give you when I said I do. When we had that $20,000 wedding and I was looking all good and you was looking all hot and we was all excited. I don't want to do that anymore because I'm not getting a return on what I expected. That's not what marriage is. Marriage is commitment. Whether you get what you say you thought you were going to get or what you intended to get at that moment you still give what you signed up to give mm -hmm. now you can confront you can talk about it you can work out whatever that That's issue true. is but it's not contingent upon what you receive marriage is always a giving cycle and we always say that if you always give from your place and your spouse always give from their place you will continue to give and that's what it's all about you gotta be able to pour out and give that is so true. That is word. Yeah, so too busy we, looking for a way out. Absolutely, Nicole. So we have reached the top of the hour. Yeah. Unfortunately, we going to have to leave you guys. <laughs> Babe, <laughs> it's so extra. It was something I was going to tell you guys that I that had Um, Wait a minute. Out. My wife, she got some more stuff she want to share. She don't want to get off the scope right now. So I don't. I miss you guys. Like, I really do. I miss I miss being on MBG. MBG is like everything. So, as we said earlier, the top of the hour, it's just one. Both sides have to give hard when it's just one. Yeah, it's absolutely hard when it's just one meal. But one thing we always say say about marriage, if you, if you compare marriage to the Word of God and what Christ says marriage is, there are a lot of times in our Christian walk that it's very one-sided. It, that we're not giving yeah. God all of what we're supposed to be giving him, that we're not seeking him, that we're neglecting him, that we're not spending time with him, that we're not loving him to the degree and manner that he's loving and giving to us. That's, That's a one-sided relationship. And our marriage is to God too, because God is the groom and we are the brides of the church mm -hmm. and so a lot of times that's our life and we do that same thing in marriage but in our relationship with God we don't anticipate or expect that God will turn his back on us God doesn't say okay right now I see she's a little distracted she's not spending time with me she's not praying as she needs to pray so I'm gonna disconnect from her I'm gonna shut off my relationship I'm gonna stop giving her what she needs I'm gonna stop being available I'm gonna stop being there for her because right Right now, she's distracted and she's not giving to me. That's not what God does. And so if we are to be Christ-like in our marriage. We are to do the same thing. That's right. why it goes back to whether you're getting what you're supposed to get or getting what you feel like you should be getting. That doesn't stop what you pour out. You still pour out to your spouse. Now, you deal with the issues, but you still pour out. And when you truly are walking in Christ. You will do it so effortlessly. Even yeah, when, when they bring that that is not Christ-like to you, you're, 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 automatically you will pour out love. And, and the Bible says it. Love conquers all. Love, love conquers all. Love yeah. conquers all. So anything you, you face in your marriage, anything you go through, you pour love on top of it. Guess what? And it don't keep records. That's... <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't, man. You just threw, you just threw me so. But that's so that's so right. It doesn't keep records around. And that's exactly what we're talking about. Because that's a record keeping moment right there. When you're like, okay, well, you know, last week you was kind of. You remember shady. when last week you had them told exactly, me exactly, exactly. When I came in the house, you didn't even hug me, so I'm not even gonna speak to you. You didn't even acknowledge me. That's the same thing. And so, um, yeah, Phil, we come on um every other Monday. That's supposed to be our schedule, but we had been gone for a moment. We were enjoying our vacation with the kids and family and just having a little regrouping time together. Yeah, we um, have been doing some practicing. Of what? Have we have been reconnecting, guys. But yeah. no, we have been coming back in. Uh, we have been having communion. <laughs> We have to have a community. We enjoyed you guys too, Morgan. Um, no, we, we don't have to go. We don't have to go. Let's just stay. You know what? <laughs> My husband always says I come no. with like a 10-page list of no, points the for is, MBG. If, I mean, we enjoy it. Let's have Q&A. If you have a question yes. that you want to shoot. Have if you have a question that you want to shoot us before we get off, <laughs> go ahead and shoot the question. Even if it's something that you may want to ask us about us, yeah. it's fine. Go ahead and shoot the question. We're going to have a quick Q&A. Um, if it's some advice that you may need about a situation that you may be dealing with, mm -hmm. feel free to type it up, shoot it to us right now, um, up under the comment section Yeah, and we'll be more than happy because we don't have to go nowhere. <laughs> I mean, we don't have nothing to do. Y'all hear the sarcasm in, in no, no, Rob's no, no, no. voice, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to be joined together in holy matrimony after this cup. <laughs> I just can't. <laughs> My 
loves the first time watching. Thanks for that. Oh, thanks, Dominique. We enjoy oh, thank we you guys. Appreciate the you guys. Davis family, man. We're going to yes. give a shout out to y'all, man. We thank Tune you guys in. for tuning in. Thank you. I know often, man, we don't really get too many husbands to join in, but I'm glad that we uh, had a few husbands. husbands. Shout out to Mr. Davis, man. Yeah. That's awesome. That's awesome. So, so for those who may be new to MBG, we uh we have been doing Married by God MBG Mondays as we call them for about what two years. Two years now, and we did them every Monday for about a year and a half, and we just a couple of months ago started going to every other Monday, and we've hit or miss some Mondays, but uh yeah, typically we used to do it every week, and we come with a different topic. So even if you check out a lot of the old um videos they are very very good like we do a uh, series on just different yeah. subjects god gives us um and different topics and we usually take the bible um and bible stories and then we incorporate it into marriage so sometimes he just speaks in very different ways but our whole goal for mbg is to encourage marriages uplift yeah. marriages support marriages and bring some true light and some true word to marriages because and some of, fun and some, and some excitement fun. yeah yeah and some love that's some joy that's some happiness that's some some everything peace. yeah yeah we just do everything here <laughs> Oh, somebody said my husband. I want to give a so shout out to my uh, my little brother Chuck. God. I see he okay. listening. So how do we work on keeping our bond with God after a bump in our marriage? Let's go. Honey. How do we keep a bond with God? With God after a bump in our marriage? Mm -hmm. Well, first let me tell you, God never went nowhere. Mm. Okay. It was you. Who turned the blind eye on God. Mm -hmm. So he's still standing there like, yo, mm. I'm here. Yeah. So whether it's a bump, whether you jumped off a bridge, mm -hmm. whether you ran into a mountain, mm -hmm. or you uh, rolled off a cliff, mm -hmm. he's still there. Mm -hmm. And so what you do is you just picked up where you left off at. Yeah. So if you left off at one point, you yeah. pick up at that same point because that's where... Where you left him at is where he still is. Mm -hmm. And so the only thing you have to do is just go back to that place. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And began to start back praying, Reconnecting. seeking, mm -hmm. seeking more of his face, mm -hmm. you know, seeking his direction, his mm -hmm. guidance. Mm -hmm. So you're just picking up where you left off. Mm -hmm. It's just that simple. Yeah. That's, and that's the truth. I think it's just opening back the lines of communication. That's One it. thing about it is that when somebody talks to you, it's very hard <laughs> not to engage with them when they yeah, engage with you. That's true. But. Typically, if somebody's not engaging with you, you don't just jump up and start engaging. So I think it's very important. Like Ronald said, just just find the place to reconnect, the place where you mm -hmm. stop. God has always been there. Like you said, he's always been there watching, covering, keeping you. I think it's just now back to God. Can I sit? Let's sit back at yeah. the table and talk. Because now what happened is your uh, attention has been redirected mm -hmm. from where it was distracted. Mm-hmm. And you felt, may have felt like God left, but he really didn't leave. He was there. Yeah. And so now your mind has been renewed to go back to seek more of him. Yeah. And Eric said by continuing to give him the glory. Absolutely. And continue to, continue to him acknowledge him. Continue to yeah. worship him. Continue to give him the glory. Absolutely. That's absolutely great. My wife and I are watching from California. What are some great ways to connect? My wife and I don't get out much. So this is what I always find fascinating, Phil. You know when new love happens... It's always so exciting. Like, we can find 50 million things to do. We can find all these different creative date nights. We can stay on the phone all night long and hold it and conversate until we just fall asleep. Mm -hmm. We want to be with each other. We want to go have fun. I always say, go back to the place that you guys met. Go back to the incitement of your marriage, of your of the youth of your marriage, of your relationship, and start back doing some of those things. Mm. Sit down and say, hey, man, what would you like to do? Let's go do some stuff to have fun. Do some out-of-the-box things. We're real out-of-the-box because we just like to have fun as a couple and evolve. And so do some real out-of-the-box type things. And I'm going to say, just go back to the dating piece. Yeah. You know, go to the other room and call her as if she were your girlfriend. <laughs> yes! Me and my husband, we used to do this fun thing. So we'll go out, and both of us are dressed up, and we'll drive different cars. And so we'll go out, and um, if whether it's like a dance uh scene or it's like you know a restaurant, we'll go out and we'll sit. Maybe I'll sit at the bar, and he'll come up and try to talk to me as if I'm not his wife. And it's like the coolest thing because I get to listen to his game all over again and give him a hard time. But it's so not cool, and it's just the chemistry. And so you got to be creative in the different things that just excite you guys to have mm -hmm. fun to to laugh because so many people get in marriage and life happens. 
happens and we get so uptight and we lose focus of the youthfulness that, that is us as human beings, the joy, the laughter. That's a part of us. That's a part that's in us. And so you got to cultivate that part too, that laughter, that yeah. joy, that friendship piece that you guys had initially. And that's what you do. You just hang out. Even if it's, we do simple stuff like go get ice cream together and just sit there and talk. Mm -hmm. We go walking together a lot of times in our own our own community. We'll go for a run together. We'll go for a walk together, and we just hang out and we have so this whole go back, dialogue. Go back to the love boat phase. Yeah. And if those of you haven't had the book or had a chance to read the book, in the book we talk about the love boat phase, the battleship phase, mm -hmm. and the cruise. Yeah. And I think a lot of times we end up getting bored on the cruise. Yeah. And then having too many fights on the battleship. Mm -hmm. And so what you have to do is you have to go back to the love boat. Yes. And what the love boat does, it reunites that fire yes. that has been put out. You see, like, that fire is being <laughs> reunited right now. And so I think you have to go back to that place. You have to go back to that place where you guys first started. You have yeah. to go back to the foundation. Yeah. And just, you know, have at it. Yeah. You know, do some things that you haven't done in a while. Mm -hmm. You know, go have sex on the porch. Mm. Um, go have sex Always in the car. To have sex uh, the go porch. to the public parking lot and do some things that you never done. You can get arrested for stuff like that. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't. No. You can't. When you, go, when you marry. You when can't you just, get arrested for that if you marry. No. That's public indecency. Pray. Ask God to cover you. Because <laughs> you're about to go do something real nasty to your husband. And I guarantee you, God is going to cover you. Because he's a keeper. I just can't with this one. I just no, can't with God this. is a keeper. And There's no way that if you want to re <laughs> reunite your fire and your marriage, and you go and you have sex in the public parking lot, God going to let you get arrested. No. He going to keep you. And Ronald going to and Ronald gonna bond you out if, if, if by chance you do. <laughs> <laughs> no. Congratulations, Eric, on 23 years. I saw that. 23 years strong, him and, him and wife. So congratulations, guys. That's awesome. That's awesome. We pray that God blesses you with Man, many know, more years. Of, I know God is in love. your heart, Eric. Because to be with these emotional creatures... <laughs> that long period of time. No, blessing to you guys, man. I'm that, just joking. Is. that is a blessing. That is truly a blessing to that be with is. someone that long. Yeah. And to still be very excited and happy about it. Um, we bike ride together. Oh, yeah. Oh, let me tell you, Phil. We did a bike ride together and we thought we were like really fit. Like, cause we run. So yeah. we just assumed that we were really in shape. And that bike ride taught us that we were totally, like, mm -hmm. not even close to... So, basically, what I had to do is I had to teach her how to ride a uh, bike over. No. I did. You did not teach me how to ride a bike over. Well, really, not really. Left field. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> you're so left field. Like, no, but a bike is a whole nother, like, bitch. Yes, like, it is. Especially it is. going up and down the hills. It's just so, I mean, by the time we were trying to come back on the way home, I was, like, walking and pushing the bike. It was a lot. So, yeah. but, but it was so relaxed. It felt so free. The wind blowing mm -hmm. on you. We were conversating. It was really nice. So, bike rides are really cool way to spend time yeah. together. And find a good destination. Mm -hmm. For your bike ride. Yeah. That was my birthday. So shout out to him. Alfonso Brooks. Happy, 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 happy birthday to you. Uh, Mr. Morgan, Brooks. I hope you have something exciting. You made it very great for him that you bless him. Like Ronald said, get your blessing, Alfonso, tonight. We hope that you guys had a great, great celebration for his birthday. That is Morgan. a blessing to have another year of life. Morgan, just some advice. It don't take much. <laughs> I promise you. <laughs> just... Listen to the Spirit of God tonight. <laughs> Listen to the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God going to tell you to do some things tonight that you oh probably haven't done. God. Listen to the Spirit of God. Let Mr. Brooks get his blessing. Mr. Brooks, I pray that tonight would be a night to remember. Yes. Yes, that is awesome. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Glad you guys join in with us even on your birthday. Thanks. <laughs> no, I understand how to love my wife. I okay, love the shirt. It was a brand new day. Absolutely. 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 Anytime, anytime you learn how to truly love the way God intended us to love in marriage, marriage is a wonderful thing. It it's is. something you can't but even explain. Let me, let me jump onto that. Because a lot of people, we like to say it and not understand what all come with it. Because uh -huh. when you love Christ, I mean, when you love your wife as Christ loved the church, mm -hmm. that simply means that you're willing to die mm. for your wife. Mm -hmm. Now, in that process, that is not an easy process. Mm -hmm. Because pr Christ never gave up mm -hmm. on the church. Yeah, He went through hell for the church. Mm -hmm. Meaning that it's going to be some things that you don't like, some things that you don't agree with, some mm -hmm. things that that's going to get up under your skin. 
and some things that make you want to quit sometimes. Yeah. But guess what? When you love your wife, just like Christ loved the church, you have to keep going. You have to keep pushing. Mm -hmm. You have to keep, you know, going to the high mark. Yeah. And when you say die, people always assume the physical bill. Yeah, physical. I take a bullet for but no, die to self. Like, well, it depends on what they shoot. You said you said take a bullet. That just depends. <laughs> no, a little twenty-two, a little nine millimeter. Yeah, but it, I, I can't with you. We, I just can't. If we got you. a shotgun, man, that's something. You gonna different. take the shotgun blow? <laughs> God is still working with me. <laughs> Eric, God is still working with me, man. <laughs> but no, when people think that, they think the physical aspect, but that whole dying for your spouse or dying, that's that dying to self yeah, that you dying have to, to self. do. You have like, to die yes. to self to live for your spouse. Mm -hmm. Because the power that God gives men in a marriage to cleanse their wife and mm -hmm. present, when you got the power to cleanse a woman, and and make her new and take out all the blemishes and present that thing back to yourself. That's some power. Like yeah, that's right. some power. That's better than even this thrifting stuff, like refurbishing stuff. That is some awesome that power some, to have, and yeah. that's the kind of power God gives husbands in marriage when they utilize. But it even after you cleanse her and all that, she still is like a filthy rag before God. Yeah, we absolutely, all we all are. Yeah, <laughs> I said I like how you did that, but you ain't got time for you. <laughs> Oh man! <laughs> but we love you guys, man. No, we don't have to go. We don't like, have to go. Look, uh, please, y'all, let's continue it's, the Q and A. We do have to go. No, we, we don't do have, have to go. go. We have let's work. continue. We have work tomorrow. I know. We, You're we trying to be work. sarcastic. <laughs> Philippians four thirteen says that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. <laughs> Come on, Eric. He said, "Just like Adam, little E, don't get him started." Now we want to get you guys started. On, let's go, roll. Eric, let's, let's go, go man. <laughs> They get you started, man. But you know what? It it it, it is uh, the whole the whole point of being able to do MBG and have this platform is that so many times we don't get this we don't we don't get this out in the world we don't hear people talking about marriage and so you get people to give up on marriage so early because nobody normalizes a lot of the things that go on in marriages and so when it's not normalized for you you begin to think that your marriage is the only one facing that issue you begin to think you're the yeah, only one true. struggling in that that's area true. and so you give up but when something is normalized you're like okay oh they went through that same thing they've been married 25 years oh they faced that same thing they made it 10 i'm just at year two so i can hold on and i can get through it and that's what it's about and so if you guys don't do anything else encourage marriages out there around you encourage marriages that are around you to keep going to keep pushing uplift them pray for them and like we mm -hmm. said earlier if you're not if you didn't drop your name on the 30 days of prayer everybody that we see that's commented we're going to drop you in the 30 days of prayer anyway but if you um want to drop your name feel free but we're going all the way to the 31st that will be day 30 for us because on, we started on, on the in. second so feel free to jump in this 30 days of prayer with us pray for all marriages pray for your marriage pray for marriages around you because we are believing God to move mightily in marriages. This is our second time second doing time. 30 days of prayer this year. And so we go hard. Um, we commit to it. Sometimes it's hard. We come in, we sleepy, we tired. We had an exhausting day. We don't even feel like we have the ability to encourage ourselves, but by the strength of God, because it's not by our strength, it's by God's strength that we're able to keep pushing and keep praying and keep going hard and the enemy will come. So don't get discouraged. If you're feeling like you're being attacked in this yeah. 30 days, believe God is moving. There is a shift. And so the enemy is trying to distract you. He's trying to get you to move the other way when God is moving in your marriage and God is beginning to work. So trust God through the process and we're going to continue to pray for you guys and pray for everybody. And you guys keep us uplifted in prayer as so we can continue to have what we need to be able to do married by God. We love you guys. We pray that God continues to bless you. You all have a great rest of your week and a great night. And we, um, before we end out, you know, if you guys got anything else you want to say, let's do Q&A some more. I can't wait. Good night, guys. We love you. <laughs>